Welcome to my channel. We're gonna value three Canadian stocks and look at their financial ratios. The first company is Loblaw, a Canadian supermarket retailer. It also operates a private label program that includes grocery and household items, clothing, baby products, pharmaceuticals, cell phones, and financial services. This company has a market cap of 24.5 billion Canadian dollars and they're trading at a little under $67 a share. And to calculate the shares outstanding, that's market cap divided by stock price gives us shares outstanding, 366 million. We're gonna need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at their financials. This top line is free cash flow, and that's how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount it back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if you have positive free cash flow, that means you're generating more cash than you're spending. And they have positive healthy free cash flow every year. And their best year is in 2019. Their net income also looks really good. It's about a billion dollars a year on average and their revenue is pretty strong, 40 to $50 billion. So it's a really big company. And as you can see, their profit margins are really low, two to 3%. Net profit margin is net income divided by revenue. It's how well you convert revenue into net income. So if you have a lot of expenses, you'll have a low net profit margin. Since this is a grocery store, they're known for having really low profit margins. Two to 3% sounds about right. Let's look at a capital structure so we can figure out the discount rate to apply to the future cash flows. They have $7.8 billion of debt and they pay 3.8% interest on their debt. So the cost of debt is 2.85% and the way you calculate that it's the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. They have 41% debt in their capital structure. The other 59% is equity. To calculate the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a really low beta, 0.29. So the stock doesn't move too much. It's pretty steady. And to calculate the cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. And that comes out to 4.5%. And the weighted average cost of capital is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. That's up here in blue. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's $53 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. We get a value of the company of $53 billion. We divide that by 366 million shares. We calculate an intrinsic stock price of $145. They're trading at $67. So they're trading at a 54% discount. So it's a strong buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street says 134. So they're a little lower than me, but we're in the same range. Let's look at the stock price. It looks like it was really steady for two, three years, then jumped up a little and hasn't moved too much in about a year and a half. Seems like coronavirus hasn't affected this company. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE, a great price of sales and a great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 22.7. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.5. But remember, they're a supermarket, so they get lots of revenue, but they don't do a great job at converting that revenue to earnings. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value, that's equity over shares outstanding. And I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.2. So they have a pretty good price to book ratio. They have a good current ratio, a great interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities so they can cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 10%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above two, they're at 7.5. And I did do two other videos in the same industry as Loblaw, and they happen to be both Canadian companies, Alimentation, Couchetard, and Metro. 
If low blah has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. In terms of PE, they're a little lower than the average, but all the companies are pretty similar in that category. They have the best price of sales, price to book, and current ratio of the three companies. They're the worst in ROE, and they're in the middle in terms of debt, and they're in the middle in terms of market cap. They're all pretty big companies. The second company we're going to look at is Linamar. This is Canada's second largest automobile parts manufacturer after Magna International. They have a market cap of 2.7 billion Canadian dollars and they're trading at $42 a share. Their financials look pretty good. They have fairly consistent free cash flow net income. Their revenue grew nicely in 2016 to 17 to 18 but did dip a little in 2019. They might struggle a lot more in 2020. They have $1.9 billion of debt. They pay 3.6% interest on the debt, and the cost of debt is 2.76%. 32% of that capital structure is debt, 68% is equity, and to calculate the cost of equity, we need the beta. And the beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market, and their stock is a little more volatile than the market. The market as a whole has a beta of one. The cost of equity is 12.6%, and the weighted average cost of capital is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. That's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimate a four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of 3.7 billion Canadian dollars. We divide that by 64 million shares and we get a calculated intrinsic stock price of $58. The trading at 42, so the trading at a 27% discount. Simply Wall Street has them value at $29. So I think they're expecting the company to struggle a lot with coronavirus since they're a car manufacturer. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So I calculated the stock at $58 and they were trading about that a couple of years ago, but it's been dropping ever since for the past two years. So it seems like it could be a good value, but not according to Simply Wall Street. Let's look at their financial ratios. They have a great PE, great price to sales, and great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 6.3. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 0.4. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 0.7. Looks pretty good so far. Good current ratio, great interest coverage ratio, and a weak ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 11%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense and they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I did a video on Goodyear and they're in the same industry as Linamar. And Linamar has a better PE ratio, but Goodyear has a better price to sales and price to book. But both companies are really good in that category, almost too good. But Linamar is better in current ratio, ROE, debt, and market cap. The last company we're going to look at is Dai and Durham. And this company connects a global network of people so they can access public records for business transactions. And they have a market cap of 1.1 billion Canadian dollars and they're trading at $27 a share. They have positive free cash flow each year, but it's not too big. Net income is positive in three years, but negative in 2019. And their revenue does seem to be growing quite a bit, so that's a good sign, but I think they're still in the growth stage. They have $135 million of debt. They pay about 5.5% interest on the debt, and the cost of debt is 4.15%. They're 100% debt because they have negative equity. When a company has negative equity, that means their assets are less than their liabilities on the balance sheet. So the weighted average cost of capital is going to be the cost of debt 4.15%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. And we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $389 million. We divide that by 40 million shares. And we get an intrinsic calculated stock price of $10. It's trading at 27, so it's trading at a pretty significant premium. Simply, Wall Street has a value of $15.
It's really hard to value these small companies. It's almost like a guessing game, throwing darts at a board. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. So it looks like an IPO just a couple months ago. They have a bad PE, a bad price of sales, and a bad price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 16. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They have negative equity, so they have negative price to book. They have a weak current ratio, good interest coverage ratio. The current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income and negative equity, so we can't look at their ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can cover their interest payments. I like to see above 2.0 in this category. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I did videos on Adobe, Blackberry, Microsoft, Oracle, Palo Alto, Square, VMware, and Wix. And this is the only Canadian company I looked at in this category. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in pretty much every category because they're a new company. So they don't have really strong financials. It's going to take them a little time. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll definitely answer. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.